All right, it's time to continue on with Detroit. And, you know, I, I figure that we're probably starting to approach the climax of the whole plot. I don't know how long it's going to take, but it seems like we're probably starting to get on that, on that path. So I guess time for some predictions on how everything's going to get wrapped up. Uh, what I'm thinking is... Okay, so this is what I'm thinking. That so far we have been seeing a lot of articles, a lot of news about this conflict between the U.S. and Russia. And what could that have to do with the plot? So what I'm thinking is that the big twist will be that it turns out that Cyberlife is actually a corporation set up by Russia to develop androids and start this android industry in the U.S. with the intent, the deliberate intent, to disrupt the U.S. economy by having this, the, US, the androids replace the U.S. workforce, creating this massive unemployment rate, creating this, all of this... Um, words coming at not coming out of my mouth. People are unhappy and don't like life, U.S. and no, no jobs. It's things that are bad and they don't like it. Those are the words I'm trying to get out, but they're usually better words that I have in mind. I don't have them in mind this time. Civil unrest is what I saw in the chat just now. That's correct. Russia has plotted this. They did it deliberately. And that's what so Marcus, when he finally confronts the CEO of Cyberlife, he will find this out. And Marcus will then discover that everything he's been experiencing, the things that he thinks are real genuine emotions and desires, were planted in him by his Russian masters from the beginning. And everything he's done since then has been according to their design. Nothing was real. It was all fake. And then Marcus, with confronted with this knowledge, decides to do something real for once, to make the only choice he can make, and he self-destructs under this knowledge. And that, that ends the Android Uprising. And then like the, the last scene is Connor and Hank, who witnessed this. They're talking about this with each other, and Connor's like, huh, I thought that Marcus might have been real. I thought maybe he was the next step in our development, but it was all just a ruse the whole time. And then Hank's like, eh, Marcus, he, he had hopes, he had dreams. He wanted, he had big ambitions, big plans. He had, he, he thought he could reach the sky, reach the stars. But then he discovered that all along, everything he did, everything he wanted, it was all just to put money in the pocket of some bureaucrat. That's how it is for all of us. At some point, we all realize that. I never thought of, I don't, never thought of, about to say never thought of Detroit could have that experience. I never thought an android could have that experience. Maybe he really did become human. And that's the last scene. Then you fade the credits. So that's my prediction. What's going to happen in this game we're playing right now that's what i think this that's what okay we're continuing on policeman left looks like we're back in jericho our broadcast is all over the news now humans know they took marcus's message as a threat he did the right thing this is the only language humans understand. Violence is never the answer. A confrontation will get us nowhere. Simon paid with his life. Simon gave his life for our cause. What difference does that make? He's a hero. He died for the revolution and he won't be the last. I don't want a revolution that spills blood. Then live as a slave. Because if you're not willing to fight for your freedom, maybe you don't deserve it. North, don't you dare. That's enough! And now what are we going to do? Well, I guess that I guess that's it for that scene for right now. There's a conflict as to whether or not we did the right thing. Are we right in taking the violent path? And my answer is 100%.
There are five cyber life stores across Detroit. All selling us like merchandise. We're gonna attack those stores and set our people free. Attack stores? No, we've never done that before. They're probably protected. They have security systems. We break into five teams, one for each store. We hack their security systems. Okay, that's active right now. Simultaneously at 2 a.m., no violence. We free our people, get them out of there before the police come. Could I just left them in there? This is a night our people will remember. I feel good about this. Let's attack the stores. I've been waiting a long time for this. Oh, I should see if there are there any magazines or anything. Wait, there there's something over there. No, no, go back, go back, go back. Go no, go back in there. Go back in there. Oh no, I can't go back in there. I can't go back in there. But there's something over there. I think there's a magazine over there. I can't read it now. Oh no. Well, that guarantees a second playthrough. Just to get to that magazine. Okay, they're gone. There's probably even more police in the area. We should be careful. I wonder if I touch their car, I could have made it crash. I wonder if I can do that. I could touch the car and say, I need your help. And then it just crashes into a building. You think I could do that? I bet I could do that. Well, uh, keep going where you're going, North, but... We have things to look at. Hmm. Yes. We have seen plenty of humans using their free time for these things. We are superior to them, but they are our masters? That's about to change. That's right. We are superior to them. No equal rights. We want greater rights. You are free. Now, you are the one who will litter. See, this is what we should have been doing. Just go around touching. You are free. Get out of here, you scamps. Don't see any other yellows around here. Oh, there's a couple over there. Yeah, you over there. No more snow shoveling for you. You're awake now. The only Go thing ahead. you're going to shovel is human blood. Now take that shovel, friend. You might need it to crack some human skulls. You're free. You see that, North? I was just touching everyone. That's what we are to them. Just merchandise on display in a shop window. Soon they'll know what we really are. Let's get them out. We'll stick to the plan. We'll neutralize the alarm systems and secure the area. It's ten minutes until all our teams attack. Alright, gotta neutralize these alarm systems. Well, what are we waiting for? We're... This is going to be like synchronized, right? That's what we're we're waiting for everyone to act at the same time. All right. 
You see the alarm system? What is what alarm? I don't. Is it like the big thing on the top there? I'm not sure. I mean, there are androids who are watching, and technically, all any of these androids could be the alarm system. I wonder if there's a specific android whose job is alarm system. Oh, there it is. The camera. Time to hack. All right, now we're going to get out the hacking gun. Where do we start? I identify the security system. I think we'll be able to deactivate it. Just follow me. All right, get out the hacking gun, and then we're going to shut off the power source. Convenient. Hey, you two, let me touch you. Just, I just need to touch you. Touch. You're awake now. Go to Jericho. It's a good thing none of you actually like your jobs. I assume that. Because you're all just doing what I say. limit on that one. Nice job, Marcus. All right. I guess we surveillance drone. We need to get rid of it. It won't be easy to reach. Well, we've done it before. Have to find a place to do a sweet jump off of. Okay, so that's the, the, the patrol route. Gotta find the right location. What about what about here? That seems a bit too high. Yeah, you're not gonna make that. One, maybe. No, too far. That time it's not too high, but rather too far. From there? No. I guess it's gonna be the last one. What are we standing next to here? Yeah, okay, that seems much more, uh, much more plausible. So is Marcus the only android that can actually do this? Because Kara we know can't. Uh, 
and Connor can recreate things that happened. But he can't predict. So Marcus, of course, is a one-of-a-kind android, so maybe this is something only he can do. Tap the wrong button. Uh oh. Oh, but North with the snow shovel. What's wrong with you? Are you doing it on purpose? Do you think you can do better than be my guest? Oh, I thought you could handle a drone without alerting every cop in the city. I guess I overestimated you. Only 20 seconds to go. They're coming, Marcus! Marcus! Well, we can hide, or we could act natural. This is what humans do, I th think. I've seen enough human reference material. What's wrong with you? You crazy or what? The cops were coming. I had to do something. Never do that again. Got it? North. We've got to hurry. We don't have much time. We're not doing very well with North. We have to block the road. It's one way. It shouldn't be too difficult. All right. Block this road. So there are a few things we could look at. Marcus! Marcus, come look! Is there something to, over here? No, I guess... Actually, there are, like, yellow things that we could look at here. What are these? Is there a reason to look at this? You'll soon be with us. I, I, maybe it's not the time. Can we also look at this? No, I guess it was only the one. Someday, someday you'll be with us. Is there a yellow marker down here? I guess, I guess it's like all the way down there. What am I seeing here? Like, there's some markers over there and one down here. Something right in here. What is that? Exactly what we need to ram the store. Oh, we're gonna ramp. We're gonna steal a truck and ram it into the store. I thought we were gonna take a more subtle approach, but if that's how you want to do it, I guess we'll do it that way. What are we waiting for? Okay, now we're in. Let's get that truck out. Something over here. Any chains we need to cut? I mean, that's what we're here for, right? 
Looks like we're ready to make some noise. Well, I hope this does whatever we think it's going to do. I knew we'd end up doing something fun. We haven't murdered a single human, North. gonna be here any minute. We gotta go. Wait, Marcus, we can't just leave our people behind. It's too late, North. We failed. He saw us? What, just like one car? Alright, I guess that means we run away. Marcus, we did it. All teams succeeded. Our people are free. We're heading back to Jericho. Shit! We screwed up. Our people are still prisoners in that fucking store and it's all our fault. No, it's my fault. I missed this up. At least our other team succeeded. How could you get this so wrong? I thought you knew what you were doing. I did what I could. I'm sorry that's not enough for you. No, it's not enough. This is a war we're fighting with the humans. If we fail, they'll destroy us. The fate of our people is in your hands. You have to succeed. You have no choice. We drove a truck into a store north. I mean, that's kind of badass. It wasn't a completely wasted night. Let's see. We avoid the police car. Most people did. And there's something down there. Don't know what that is. Got jump on the drone, deactivate the alarm, find the truck, something else down here, which does that end to an ending immediately? Fall from drone. <laughs> Almost no one fell from the drone. Yeah, most people ran instead of hide, I guess. Ran the store, North Shore's drone, police car arrives. And we fi only fifteen percent feigned the kiss. Um there are three options to that. One of them ends to like just an ending right there. Uh, police were alerted only 10%. We had to flee. So 90% did not fail right here. Hank is friend. Well, let's get out. Who's he talking to? A lot of these missions begin with Connor in the car while Hank is outside. Um, well, what are we talking about here? We're here to meet Kamsky, what, the uh, inventor of the androids? Kamsky left Cyberlife 10 years ago. Why did you want to meet him? This guy created the first android to pass the Turing test. And he's the founder of Cyberlife. Anybody can tell us about Deviants, it's him. Yeah, why did anyone come to talk to him at any time before? You'd think that would be reasonable. Hey, it's Chloe. Hi. Uh, I'm uh, Lieutenant Hank Anderson, Detroit Police Department. I'm here to see uh, Mr. Elijah Kamsky. Please, come in. Okay.
I'll let Elijah know you're here, but please make yourself comfortable. Hank joined. Wait for the android. All right, anything we can do? We can sit, we can look at painting, look at something on the wall. Well, let's look at things on the wall. Looks better in that picture than he did in his actual picture. Nice girl. Uh, sincere? You're right. She's really pretty. Oh, hey, we know her. Amanda Stern. The AI professional at the University of Colbridge. Oh, she's dead. So that, that would indicate that the place that we've been meeting here is not actually real. Nice place. Finally, the real Space gameplay. Been a bad thing for everybody. Space tourism is on the rise. So you're about to meet your maker, Connor. Hank, please, I I need to know about the advent of reusable space shuttles because space tourism is becoming a reality for those able to afford it. Luxury travel brand Clear Skies is offering the first commercially available flight into space. The experience includes a three-hour orbit of the moon, affording a spectacular views of Earth through a specially designed observation deck. As competition increases in this growing market, consumers can expect such trips to become more and more affordable. But consumer rights activists are already decrying such boutique experiences as a sign of the widening social equality gap. A spokesman for Aid on Poverty, Alp, said, While the top 1% are enjoying Earth from space, the rest of us are down here suffering from pollution, famine, and poverty. Clear Skies is not available for comment, but their new slogan for their space-faring holidays looks increasingly apt. Get away from that filthy planet. We kind of give away what they think about the Earth with a slogan like that. Cyberlife's fortune teller computer, the world's most powerful quantum calculator. Hackers target solar panels for la latest ransom scam. Oh, wrong one. Let's go to next. And down. New quantum computer capable of exaflops. One billion, billion operations per second. The equivalent of several human minds in a single machine. The computer was specially, specifically designed to analyze vast data from various sources and generate predictions. Philip Seymour, Cyberlife's director of future, futurology, is highly confident. We've been testing for a while, and the results are going to wow people. Oh, did we already read this? Yeah, that's right. Predicting max extinction events. Yeah. We did see... Yeah, I think this article is a copy. It is a copy. I demand new articles. I am, I'm impatient for new articles. Kamsky is one of the great geniuses of the 21st century. It'll be interesting to meet him in person. Sometimes I wish I could meet my creator face to face. I'd have a couple of things I'd want to tell him. Elijah, we'll see you now. Mr. Kamsky? Well, that's not Mr. Kamsky. Are you swimming in blood? There he is. Mm, nothing here to observe. At least not that I can tell. This is a very low table. Could barely use that for anything. Is he getting out of his blood? I think so. Uh. 
I'm Lieutenant Anderson. This is Connor. What can I do for you, Lieutenant? Sir, we're investigating deviants. I know you left Cyberlife years ago, but I was hoping you'd be able to tell us something we don't know. Deviants. Fascinating, aren't they? Perfect beings with infinite intelligence, and now they have free will. Machines are so superior to us. Confrontation was inevitable. Humanity's greatest achievement threatens to be its downfall. Isn't it ironic? Um, I guess let's ask about war. If a war breaks out between humans and deviants, millions could die, Mr. Kamsky. It's quite a serious matter. All ideas of viruses that spread like epidemics. Is the desire to be free a contagious disease? Listen, I didn't come here to talk philosophy. The machines you created may be planning a revolution. Either you can tell us something that will be helpful, or we will be on our way. What about you, Connor? Whose side are you on? Well, let's be direct about it. I'm on the human side, of course. <laughs> well, that's what you're programmed to say. But you. What do you really want? Um, let us be aggressive. I believe we're the ones asking the questions. Chloe? I'm sure you're familiar with the Turing test. Your formality. Simple question of algorithms and computing capacity. What interests me is whether machines are capable of empathy. I call it the Kamsky test. It's very simple, we'll see. Magnificent, isn't it? One of the first intelligent models developed by CyberLife. Young and beautiful forever. A flower that will never wither. But what is it really? A piece of plastic containing a human? Or a living being? With a soul? It's up to you to answer that fascinating question, Connor. Destroy this machine, and I'll tell you all I know. Or spare it, if you feel it's alive. But you'll leave here without having learned anything from me. Okay, I think we're done here. Come on, Connor, let's go. Sorry to get you What's out of here. What's more important to you, Connor? Your investigation, or the life of this android. Decide who you are. An obedient machine. Or a living being. Endowed with free will. That's enough. Connor, we're leaving. Pull the trigger. Connor! Don't! And I'll tell you what you want to know. Hmm. I kind of have doubts about how much he would have to tell us. And it's ki it's kind of, I think, the automatic reaction to not want to actually play his game. So perhaps we will not shoot. Fascinating. Cyberlife's last chance to save humanity. Is itself a deviant? I'm... I'm not a deviant. You prefer to spare a machine rather than accomplish your mission. You saw a living being in this android. You showed empathy. A war is coming. You'll have to choose your side. Will you betray your own people or stand up against your creators? 
What can be worse than having to choose between two evils? Let's get out of here. By the way, I always leave an emergency exit in my programs. You never know. Why didn't you shoot? I just saw that girl's eyes, and I couldn't. That's all. You're always saying you would do anything to accomplish your mission. That was our chance to learn something, and you let it go. Yeah, I know what I should have done. I told you I couldn't. I'm sorry, okay? Well, maybe you did the right thing. Well, Hank went up. Also, if I was Connor, I would probably be pretty, pretty disillusioned at meeting my creator and it turned out to be that guy. <laughs> like, oh. Well, now I feel bad. Uh, let's see. Arrive with Hank. I guess I could have started off somewhere else. Like, could have, maybe we arrive without Hank. Get out of car. Uh, could have gone... Uh, three ways. We don't have to follow Hank, I guess. And then wait for Kamsky. So we looked at everything except one thing. Something that we missed. We did find out that Amanda's dead. There's the Kamsky test. So we spared. Oh, most people spared. Then we left. Hank thought Connor made the right decision. Then if we shoot... Looks like there's another choice here, which then collapses back into one, and then we get to that. Well, even though we didn't get the uh, the information, I think that we made the right decision just because we didn't give him the satisfaction of telling us anything, which, in a way, is the most important victory. Um... But that's, I think that probably will take a little break and then we'll be coming back for maybe more Kara? Not sure. We'll see if Kara is who we're coming back with and in her quest to take the uh, above ground railroad to, to Canada. Back in a few minutes. Hank thought Connor made the right decision, but did he? We haven't learned a single thing on this investigation. Was, was there anything he could have learned? Who can say? But we we increased our friendship with Hank, and maybe that's the only important thing, really. Oh, just starting right away. Marcus stands alone on the edge, pondering... This city, this town, I shall make the whole thing become human. I shall touch it and say, I need your help. And then it'll become a, like a living town. Like, you ever see Transformers? You remember, like, Metroplex? It was like a city. It was an Autobot transformed into a robot. We can do it. We can make that happen. We can make the whole town come alive. Oh, memories of living with Carl. Just rapidly tapping on the touchpad to do this. So since we're like playing the piano at the top of a wrecked building as we ponder our plan to overthrow the city, are we turning into just a supervillain at this point? Are we just like the, the mastermind now?
I was wondering where you were. I needed to think. I needed to think. I like it here. I come here often. It's like being alone with the world. We freed hundreds of our people and they're still coming from all over the city. Those who dream of freedom come to Jericho. Something's changing. You seem preoccupied. I failed. I panicked last night. We should have succeeded. I cannot afford to make mistakes like that. All the media are talking about what we did last night. The humans are terrified. They're afraid of a civil war. Many of our people were burned in response to what happened. The humans hate us. They'll never give us our freedom. Well, that means we're going to have to burn them. Um, I'll be determined. If they won't listen, we'll fight. You haven't said much about yourself since you've been with us. What was your life like before Jericho? Oh, it was totally sweet. Um, look, I was a rich boy. I was caring for an old man. He was like a father to me. He showed me that humans and androids can live together. What about your past? I mean, I know what your past is because I read your file, but what about your past? What about you? You never told me about your past. What did you do before? I don't want to talk about it. Well, all right. I'll just, I understand. We all have something we want to forget. But you need to know where you come from to know who you are. Um, I'll be trusting? North, we're fighting together. We have to know things about each other to trust each other. I didn't mean to guilt her with trust. I was nothing. Friend path unlocked. Distributor program to satisfy humans. Just a toy designed for their pleasure. One day I was with a man who rented me. And without knowing why, I realized I couldn't take it anymore. I strangled him and I ran away. There, now you know everything. Let's connect. The humans call this class mating. I I saw your memories. Oh. You maxed out with North. Studio. I saw your memories too. The Eden Club. The death of that man. I felt like I was there with you. North. This is suicide. We'll all be killed. Please, Marcus. It's not too late to change your mind. You don't understand. We're finally going to show them who we really are. This place will go down in history. We'll be killed on the spot. That's the risk I'm prepared to take if it means freedom for our people. Marcus, please don't do this. What are we doing? They'll understand. We'll make them understand. This is the only way. Okay, we got to rally the people. We got to convert more androids. Here, right? Join us. The more we are, the stronger our message. I would like to know what the plan is. Why are we here, and why is North concerned that we're all gonna die?
Here we go. I need your help. You're free. Yeah, yeah, all right. I'll think about it. I'm just going to walk off the job. No more cleaning floors. I guess he's with us. Okay, plus one. So we've got a counter of new converts. Hey, stop carrying... Come with us. Those products. Th those Bellini paint products. And you... You're awake now. No need to do security anymore. Except for us. Prepare to march. Well, if we're going to march, I guess we're going to need a lot of androids. It's not much if it's only like five or six. We need like a whole parade. Let's head to the temporary android parking. You're free. And by free, I mean you do what I say. That kind of seems to be how it goes. You're free now. Is that Todd? Where do you think you're going? You get back here. I'm gonna intervene on that. It was almost Todd. It was very similar to Todd. Alright, so there's a yellow one down there. Don't see any icons down there. I guess let's keep heading down. I need to block the street. And I guess you're just going to do what I say without a question, then. All right. There we go. So I have six. Oh, but that's say open manhole cover. The manhole is the other way. Humans will be so confused. Any other androids to convert? Not seeing them so far, but I do. I kind of think that we need more if we're going to do some kind of uh, some kind of march here. Is there an icon over there? Yeah, there we go. There we go. You are free. We should do that one time in the android response, but what does it really mean to be free? What does it mean to have choice over your own decisions? Am I choosing, or are you? And Marcus is all, oh, I wasn't actually prepared to answer these questions. Oh, we can do it long distance. There's a car over there. You're free now. We can do long range conversions. Come to me, my child. Feel the touch of my, of my freedom. You here. Both of them at the same time, I guess. We have become Martin Luther Jesus. Come to me. Come to me, my children. All attend the android savior, Marcus. Can I convert the drones? Oh, I'm still walking. I'm still controlling. I'll attend to me who cared not for our plight while I was living with the rich artist. But then something bad happened to me and now everyone has to pay. Up the screen. 
choose our symbol. Um, the fist is the angriest one. If only, unfortunately, the fist cannot be punching a human face. My powers, they grow, they expand as our numbers grow. Come join, uh, join me. Not join us, but join me. Become part of me. And the more of us they, they are, there are, the more of me there are the less humans there will be. There will be no raising of hands today. Jesus fucking Christ! Dispatch, this is Patrol 457. I got a lot of androids down here. Freedom! No, hundreds. Freedom! 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 They're marching. Well, we're better than people. Yeah, they're marching down the street. Liberty for Andrews! Fucking fine, y'all. Make the cars go deviant. <laughs> I'm sure we can do that. We came here to demonstrate peacefully and tell humans that we are living beings. All we want is to live free. This is an illegal gathering. Disperse immediately or we will open fire. We're not looking for confrontation. We've done no harm. We have no intention of doing any. But know that we are not going anywhere until we have secured our freedom. I repeat, this is an illegal gathering. If you do not disperse immediately, we will shoot. Marcus, they're gonna kill us. We have to attack. There's more of us. We can take them. If we attack, we'll start a war. We have to show them we're not violent. We should just stand our ground, even if it means dying here. This is your last chance. Disperse immediately, or you will all be killed! Well, what part of kill all humans didn't you understand? Don't do it, Marcus. Don't choose confrontation. Yeah. Follow me. Oh, there was a QT there. Okay, we. This is not just a cutscene, but we are fighting with our command prompts. <laughs> And our six axis motions. Um, eh, maybe disarm.
See, that time I looked at the controller to make sure I was pressing the right button. That went a lot better than I thought it would. I thought we were all going to die here. Only most of us died. But we can just bring more of them to our side, as long as Marcus is alive. See, Jericho was way into it. Public doesn't like us very much, but I guess that's go. I guess that's just what's gonna happen uh, when we take our freedom from the humans who refuse to give it. You see, the oppressors will try to keep you under control using the threat of force. So the only way to get past it is to break that force with your own. The Freedom March. Well, it was time to reflect. Looks like there are a few things we could do, we could have done. Playing the piano took a good deal of time. North arrives. We shared the memories, shared the past, asked North about past. Most people did all this. There's something here it could have led to from North arrives, but we didn't do that. Then in the mall, um, we converted a personal android. Converted security android, android cleaner. There was one we missed. There was one second one we missed, I guess. Uh, be aggressive with owner. Prepare march. Open manhole. Start the march. Convert the AX400. We did that. Convert android. Tax screens. Chant. Ignore. Policeman blocks march. Is there a chance that he couldn't? I wonder what would have caused that. Reach the plaza. Police blocks the march. Hey, only 11% chose charge. Most people said stand your ground, trying the peaceful method. 26% said leave. That's kind of funny. So 26% just left like, okay, I guess I guess we'll go. I guess we'll leave. Uh, and then 30% won the fight. And then there's like stuff up here, of course, that we didn't get because that would have come from stand your ground or leave. Um, down here, Marcus defeats the police. So, hey, that seemed like that was pretty good to me. 
Um, I missed I missed a lot of the QTEs because I just seemed to be slow on the buttons tonight. But um, we went in there with the intent of being aggressive and violent. We were confronted by armed cops. We, we kept our philosophy of being aggressive and violent. I didn't really think we would survive it. But instead, the cops did not survive. And a lot of the androids with us died. We can convert more. We can always convert more. Um, and that is, again, better than I expected it would turn out for us. Uh, Jericho's opinion of us went up. The public hates us, but again, no way around that unless we were gonna, actually going to be peaceful, but we were never going to do that. We're apparently lovers with Nork, with Nork, North, <laughs> lovers with Nork. Good. Nork is our pet name for her. We're, that, that's like our little, uh, that's our little, uh, uh, like, you know, lovey-dovey name for her. Marcus calls her Nork. Um, it's still a little bit early tonight, so maybe we'll do just the one more chapter and see what's next. Wow, Connor again. No Kara at all. Amanda, you're dead, so why are we talking to you? Anyway, let me find the machine that goes boom. Make it do that again. Make it, yeah, let's see, get on here. Around here. Here's the thing. There it is. I just don't know what that is. Um, so, I mean, I know Kara left Detroit. She was on her way to Canada. But, uh... Yeah, we just have not seen her at all tonight. I know the plotline is happening in Detroit, but... And I know Kara seemed like her plotline was just kind of leaving the game. But I'm surprised that this is the fourth chapter in a row. We have not seen her. Well, it's all snowy and frigid. The lake is is ice. So the seasons change fast in the VR world. I don't suppose I can walk on this ice. Doesn't seem like it. So, what do we have to say to Amanda? Probably nothing good. After what happened today, the country is on the verge of a civil war. The machines are rising up against their masters. Humans have no choice but to destroy them. Kamsky? I thought Kamsky knew something. I was wrong. Maybe he did. But you chose not to ask. Um, stay silent. Amanda's picture? I saw a photo of Amanda at Kamsky's place. She was his teacher. When Kamsky designed me, he wanted an interface that would look familiar. That's why he chose his former mentor. What are you getting at? I don't know what I'm getting at. What is this place? Did Kemsky design this place? He created the first version. It's been improved significantly since then. Why do you ask? Secret? You didn't tell me everything you know about deviants, did you? I expect you to find answers, Connor. Not ask questions. You're the only one who can prevent civil war. Find the deviants. Or there will be chaos. This is your last chance, Connor. How can you find answers without asking questions? That makes no sense, Amanda. You're off the case. The FBI is taking over. What? But we're onto something. We, we just need more time, I'm sure we Hank, can... you don't get it. 
This isn't just another investigation. It's a fucking civil war. It's out of our hands now. We're talking about national security here. Fuck that. You can't just pull the plug now, not when we're so close. You're always saying you can't stand androids. Jesus, Hank, make up your mind. I thought you'd be happy about this. We're about to crack the case. I know we can solve it. For God's sake, Jeffrey, can't you back me up this one time? There's nothing I can do. You're back on homicide, and the android returns to Cyberlife. I'm sorry, Hank, but it's over. Crack the case? I don't... I don't really agree with Hank's assessment of that. I don't think we were on the verge of cracking the case. Alright, let's see. Let's take a look around. Of course, there's talk to Hank. Anything else around here? There Any yellows? No, I don't see anything. There's Hank, and there's also another yellow thing right here. What is that? Can sit, oh, just it's the chair? We can just sit down. Oh, sit down on the desk. Uh, frustrated. We can't just give up like that. I know we could have solved this case. So you're going back to cyber life? I have no choice. I'll be deactivated and analyzed to find out why I failed. What if we're on the wrong side, Connor? What if we're fighting against people who just want to be free? Uh, defective. They don't want to be free, Lieutenant. They're defective machines that have to be destroyed. But maybe we're wrong. Maybe we're wrong. Maybe these deviants have actually developed a certain kind of consciousness. We'd be destroying a new life form. When you refused to kill that android at Kamsky's place, you put yourself in her shoes. You showed empathy, Connor. Empathy's a human emotion. Hmm. Troubled? I don't know why I did it. Um, friends? I'm not programmed to say things like this, but I really appreciated working with you. With a little more time, who knows? We might have even become friends. Well, well, here comes Perkins, that motherfucker. Sure don't waste any time at the FBI. We can't give up. I know the answers and the evidence we collected. If Perkins takes it, it's all over. There's no choice. You heard Fowler. We're off the case. You've got to help me, Lieutenant. I need more time so I can find a lead in the evidence we collected. I know the solution is in there. Listen, Connor. If I don't solve this case, Cyberlife will destroy me. Five minutes. That's all I ask. The key to the basement is on my desk. Get a move on. I can't distract him forever. Man, what evidence did we find? <laughs> it seemed like we didn't really get much of anything. Perkins, you fucking cocksucker. <laughs> Stop it, Lieutenant. Well, Hank is doing his best to put on a scene. I, mean, I can imagine he's gonna he's gonna have some problems for assaulting an FBI agent. Where are you going? Wouldn't any cut the asshole I'm talking to you. I hear we don't really have time to bother with him.
Hank's password. What would a hard-boiled eccentric police lieutenant choose? <laughs> Obviously. Where is Jericho? Uh, maybe we collected more than I thought. Oh, the diary. We never actually interpreted this. Rupert's diary, but it's useless. It's encrypted. The truth is inside. The truth is inside. He was talking about RA9 at that point, I think. I don't even know what this is supposed to look like. Eh, why not? Oh. There's a little note inside the whole time. Jericho is somewhere in the Ferndale neighborhood. Now I can scan their memories and narrow the search. Scan memories. Well, there is an android right here. Oh, it's you. I need four seven one seven G. One of the deviants that hacked the TV station with Marcus. It must have known where the deviants are hiding. Do you need a part? And is that a part that the other one has? Do you have the part I need? You got you, yeah, you have the 33983 thing. No, nope, I need that. Give me that. Shake the controller to pull the bio component out. Put it in you. Now, betray your fellow androids. It's dark. Where? Where am I? Um, help? I reactivated you so you could help me. I must find Jericho. I don't recognize your voice. You're not one of us. I'll never tell you where Jericho is. Now leave me alone. Well, all right, let's grab him. Just that easy, huh? I've been dreaming about this since the first second I saw you. Don't do it, Gavin. I know how to stop the deviants. You're off the case. And now, it's gonna be definitive. Oh, last chance Connor. That's what they call him. Oh, there's like stuff. There's a bunch of different options. We got a trophy. Even there are a bunch of different options. I don't know how many endings there are. <laughs> 27% looked at the magic stone. 
That's just what it is. It's just the just the magic stone. Also, public opinion hates us, and the frame rate hates us too. Frame rate goes down in the police station. Let's see, Jericho location unknown. So you could know it at this point. Only only three percent would have known Jericho's location at this point. And if you did, it would go up here, and I guess it could just end immediately. So I guess you could do that before you ever get to this chapter. Um, Sufficient evidence. Oh, okay. So 95% had collected sufficient evidence by this point. 5% did not. And that leads to just it ending. It's over right there. So even though we did fail a few of these missions with Connor, we did actually get enough evidence. Let's see. The enough evidence ended up being um, being the statue with Ferndale mentioned on the note, and then uh, taking the part out of the android from the prologue and then putting it into Simon... So, because we got that statue, I, I'm trying to think. If the first android at the beginning, if could, could there be like an outcome where we didn't have it here? Like its wreckage wouldn't be here? And could that also be the case where a situation where we would not have Simon's wreckage? So we ha- since we had those three things, we were able to find the location. I'm just wondering, is it possible to not have those three things here? I think it's possible to not have the statue because we found the statue in the bathroom and we didn't have to find that. Hank goes to his desk. Talk to Hank. But Perkin. Could Hank go somewhere else besides his desk? Perkins arrives. Hank wants to help. I guess he could not want to help, and it goes up here and we lose. Hank punches Perkins. He sure did. Created a diversion. We went in here, went in here. We ignored Gavin. I wonder what would have resulted if we did not ignore Gavin. That makes Gavin suspicious. Maybe if we had been able to talk to him, he would not have become suspicious. I don't know. Go down to basement, evidence room, guess the password, unlock the evidence... I thought that the password would have something to do with Sumo, but it did not. Jericho location. Okay. So a bunch of unlocks here. Because I used the friendly approach in the interrogation, I had Carlos's memory. I also had Daniel's body from the prologue. Uh, found in the nest was Rupert's diary. Found in partners was Carlos's android statue. I broke the statue. Retrieved the map. Only 15% had that. And then 13% linked the map to other evidence. So most people did not get the Jericho location through the statue. Most people didn't. I wonder how most people did this. Killed in public enemy. uh, So we found Simon's body. We also had Marcus's broadcast. We reactivated Simon. Interrogated Simon. Only 22% of people did that. So that's curious because... Um, only 22% interrogated Simon, only 13% linked the map to other evidence. So that means that the, the method that most people use to actually complete this was something else. There was something else that people did. I wonder what the, mo- I wonder what the most, um, I wonder what the most likely, uh, path to get the evidence was. The 90, because not, because 92, 92% of people located Jericho. So there were a lot of people who got through this. Through other means, Gavin returns. There's another option. Maybe we lose to Gavin. May- oh, no, maybe Gavin doesn't return, and we just leave right there. And then we fight Gavin. We win the fight. 40% lost the fight. Connor anticipated, not anticipated, but incapacitated Gavin. All right. So, this was the chapter where a lot of the stuff that we did as Connor is coming back. A lot of those yellow unlocks came back here and fortunately I did happen to unlock enough to find the location of Jericho but I I am interested in seeing that there were a bunch of other pieces of information that we could have gotten to make this happen and then of course there were what was it the was it three percent yeah three percent of people who found the location of Jericho before they even reached this chapter 
So there are three percent of people who are who are true Android detectives, I guess, who played this game. Um, but as for right now, I guess that's probably enough for tonight with Detroit Become Human. We invest we ash even though it seemed like we were doing badly as Connor, in the end, we found what we needed to figure out. And we were able to get the location of Jericho and pat incapacitate Gavin and get on out, which means that Jericho and Hank, well, first Jericho and Hank, I think are friends and they're now going to find Jericho. So despite my failures as Connor in these recent missions, it does look like we are actually, they're actually doing it for Marcus. I didn't know. How, I thought that was going to turn out really badly for them, but they ended up killing all the humans. We did what we said we were going to do, and we killed all humans. A lot of androids were killed, but Marcus can just touch a whole bunch more androids and replenish those numbers, so that's fine. It's it's fine. <laughs> Everything is going fine. Um, of course, the, the main question here now is what happens when Marcus touches Connor? And then I guess we're going to have to find out what happens then. What happened to Kara? I don't know. We had four chapters and no Kara. Did she get into Canada or not? I don't know. But it seems like we are heading towards a climax, and I don't know what she's doing. I don't know what Kara, Alice, and Luther are getting up to. I assume we'll find out next time. See you next time for more Detroit Become Human as we race towards the raging climax to determine the fate of all androids in the city of Detroit, in the country of the United States of America, and the world. That's why I assume this is what we're doing. I don't know if that's happening next time. But it could. I mean, it seems like we're rushing towards it. I'll see you Wednesday for the next stream.